Not very many people use these anymore. Color filters. I love using them for photography. Um, but it, it took me uh, many years to understand uh, how color filters work. Um, so I wanted to share some information that I wish I knew um, when I started photography. Um, that will help you understand uh, um, the use of color filters, what they do. Uh, w one of the most important things to pay attention to when you get any filter for, for your camera is uh, the transmission of light. So you're very most likely uh, aware of um, this picture, the electromagnetic spectrum um, and the visible light which our eyes are sensitive to are between the range of 400 to 700 nanometers. Uh, the violet blue being the shortest wavelength, red being the longest wavelength. So our eyes our eyes are receptive to different ranges within the visible spectrum. We're not just getting 100% uh, transmission between 400 and 700. You can see that there are peaks and slopes here um, that, we're, that we are uh, sensitive to. I came across this on the internet and this really helped me more than anything because I always believed that color filters were transmitting different different wavelengths throughout uh, the the visible spectrum, but in fact, it's it's an extremely simplified um, transmission of, of, of light. For example, here you can see red starts transmission at 600 nanometers and goes across there's there's full light transmission so so everything above 600 this is what you call long pass filter everything longer than 600 nanometers is 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 what a standard red uh filter is transmitting there are different reds of course but um there are reds that that are darker that are starting at 650 but but basically the, the color red itself begins at uh, 600 nanometers. So also you can see that it's, it's blocking all the colors before it. So um, you know it's showing it's showing zero percent light transmission, which is which is probably not accurate because you are gonna you are gonna get you are gonna see other colors in there, but they're not gonna be very strong at all. There, there is, there's gonna be very minimal transmission be before 600. And the farther you get from 600, you, I mean, you're not gonna see any of these colors in 400. The, the blue, the blues and violets here are, are gonna to be totally blocked. I've always was confused about cyan and, and like where it, where it was on the visible spectrum. Uh, as you can see, blue here is is transmitting. I'm gonna show you here. You can see it's darker. I mean, right here, you can see more light is coming through the, the cyan. And this is evident in the graph. It's, it's transmitting between 400 to 600. So it's the opposite of red. It's, it's the reflection of red here. So, so, Red is blocking cyan. It's the flip side. And cyan is blocking red. 400 to 600. But you notice also, if you compare it to the blue, blue 400 to 500, uh, blue cyan is transmitting everything, everything before 600. 
even into the even into the ultraviolet so it's transmitting all the blues between 400 and 500 also so when you're using color filters you, you you're going to understand what what you're paying attention to is is what you're blocking and and what you're transmitting so i'm just going to go over to the to the blues and yellow before i, I show here so um yellow here is transmitting everything above 500 so it's it's the flip side of the blue it's blocking the blue but it's allowing it's allowing cyan it's allowing half of the cyan but you also notice yellow is transmitting red completely see it's transmitting everything above 500 actually it's more more like 550 <laughs> it's not completely there's a bit of a, a bit of a curve there um, so you know if you want if you want an orange filter you're, you're moving up you're moving up towards 550 the, you know the the darker you are the closer you are getting to red and and the more you're blocking blue So you notice blue is blocking everything above 500. So blue is blocking red and it's blocking, it's blocking cyan too. See, it's blocking, it's blocking the 500 to 600. So let's look at green here. Green is transmitting between 500 and 600, which is a combination of, which is really what the cyan is actually doing. It's just blocking up the blue. So if you've got a cyan filter and you block out the blue, you get green. And, you know, you're getting a little bit of yellow here because you're, you're transmitting between 500 and 600. So you're, you're, you're getting some cyan, you're getting some yellow, uh, and, and, you know, the end result is your green. So let's look at magenta here. It's the flip side of the green. This is an interesting... Uh, interesting color because there is no magenta on, on the electromagnetic spectrum here. I'll just go back to this picture here. If you look at the, the visible spectrum, you're not going to find magenta. But magenta is the transmission. It's basically, it's a green blocker. You're blocking all the green. That's, that's what a magenta filter does. It blocks between 500 and 600. Um, but it transmits all the reds and it transmits all the blues and it goes beyond that you know if you, if you, if this if this is wider you know you're, you're transmitting the infrared and you're transmitting the the ultra ultraviolet the same with with this yellow here you're, you're you're transmitting all the infrared also blue you're blocking all the infrared and you're, you're transmitting all the ultraviolet red you're transmitting all the infrared but the the interesting thing about green it's the only color that is is, is blocking on both sides it's not transmitting any infrared and it's not transmitting any ultraviolet
So this magenta here is basically transmitting the blue and the red, blocking the green. And, and this dual combination of, of, of red and blue transmission is, is, is giving this color appearance of, of, of magenta, which is, is, is kind of a, a pinky, pinky color here. So I'm showing you a color wheel out of this book here. Just to reiterate what I've been saying with, with this here. Um, so, you know, I've always been confused with uh, the red, blue, green, color system on computers because um and and in our cameras because i was wondering well where is yellow why is it red blue green and not red blue yellow if we're dealing with primary colors so this is this is not your typical color wheel from school um you see the red blue green here are opposite you don't have the, the yellow uh, primary spaced. Um, and then you have the secondary of magenta yellow. Uh, actually, sorry, this is red cyan. Um, sorry, that's what I said. <laughs> red, red, blue, green, and then cyan magenta yellow. So if you look here, the red and blue are, are opposite to one another. Sorry, the red and cyan saying it again here. So the red is blocking the cyan, cyan is blocking the red. But a red filter is going to allow slight transmission of what's beside it. But it's going to block what's opposite the strongest. And vice versa. Blue is going to block yellow. And vice versa, right? Yellow is going to allow some. Actually, it's going to it's going to allow all the red, and it's going to allow uh, some green. It's going to allow all the green. going to block blue the strongest. Magenta and green. Opposite to one another here. I'm going to show you some stuff from this book here. Red, blue, green versus C, M, Y, cyan, magenta, yellow, K for black. Red plus green plus blue equals white. But you notice the green and the red combining to form yellow. Um, this is called an additive, additive color system here, is the red, blue, red, green, blue. So these add, these colors add to form white. Blue, green combine to form cyan, magenta, but all together, uh, these three, red, green, blue, make white. And then, the subtractive color system, which we have on our printers, we use yellow, magenta, cyan, combined to form K black in the center here. Just going to show you one more thing that I found really interesting because I've always been confused about the red, blue, green. Uh, 
um, curves when you're if you're doing photo editing and you have the the RBG curves. Uh, um, I found this very interesting. So if you if you raise the RBG curve. Um, all of them together, the red, green, blue, you're actually uh, making everything brighter. You're getting a gray. But when you lower the curve, raising the curve, lower the curve, everything's getting darker. But it changes here when you do a single channel, for example, the red. When you raise the red curve, you're getting a lighter, you're adding light, and the red is getting lighter. But when you lower the curve, you're subtracting light, and the red goes to its opposite, cyan. which is which is quite interesting I never knew that before uh, and when you raise the green curve you're putting a green cast it becomes lighter when you lower it you're getting the opposite of green you're subtracting the light and you're getting magenta cast And you know, I'm just thinking in your white balance, you're you're, you're going from green to magenta, right? Um, when you raise the blue curve, you're getting a lighter blue. When you lower it, you get the opposite, which is the yellow. Yellow. This is like a a blue with a yellow cast, which kind of looks like a, an olive green here. So that's why you're you're getting these these uh, color changes when when you raise and lower the curve. So, just in conclusion here, basically when you're doing photography and you're you're using these color filters, the colors that you're not transmitting are going to be darker. Uh, on your camera sensor because there's less light uh, you know if I'm if I'm blocking red with, with, with a cyan all the reds are gonna show up even darker near black uh, same thing if I'm if I'm using a yellow filter and I'm blocking blue it's gonna it's it's gonna get almost black so, um, not near black, but it is going to be darker. So, if you want to control your, your, your tonal values while you're doing photography, uh, you, want, you want to pay attention to uh, what you're transmitting and what you're blocking.